Hi, I'm Karen. Welcome to Texas Farmstead Living. On today's video, we're going to share with you the pros and cons of dehorning your dairy calves. If you own dairy animals, chances are that you will have to make the decision if you are going to dehorn your dairy calves. I'm going to share with you some pictures of a couple of our horned dairy heifers and a polled dairy heifer. And also our vet is going to share with you um, the differences in genetics and maybe how you can get a polled animal. And also we're going to show you the tools that we have bought to keep at our farm so that we only use the equipment at our farm so that we don't transfer any diseases to our animals. The actual term we should use instead of dehorning a dairy calf, which is younger than two months, would be disbudding. That's when you're removing the horn cells uh, before they form into horns and attach to the skull. I want to share with you the pros of disbudding or, or dehorning. The first one is your safety or anyone that handles the horned cow's safety. She may accidentally hurt you or, in, or injure you just when she's swatting flies. So it's definitely safer for you and if you have children around your dairy cow. Uh, one of these calves is, her name is Kasha and she belongs to my, my new baby grandson and I know that he is going to be leading her and milking her and so i want to make sure he is really safe okay the second uh, reason is the safety of your dairy cows herd mates i have an example in the video of when we dropped off some some heifers out at the beef cows and um, immediately the horned cows started fighting the pulled calf so at the moment, because of the drought, our cows are coming into the barn and eating, you know, they have, we've had to feed them everything they've eaten for a long time because of drought. And so therefore, such close proximity has been very dangerous mixing our horned and our polled cows or our dehorned cows together. Because the horned cows will even, you know, shake their horns at the calves to stay away from their calves. So it's just not safe. So at our farm, at the present, you know, while you're feeding, we keep them separate. Now, when the grass is growing and they're out to pasture and they're not in close proximity, we do keep them together. The third pro to dehorning or disbudding your dairy calf is I did a poll. I asked a lot of people I know that milk, um, to just get their opinion. And most people really do not want a cow that has horns, uh, especially people that are um, older, like Mr. Roofer and I, they just don't wanna risk it or if they have children around. And so um, I pretty much didn't find anyone that prefers horns. But also she's, you know, if you're in the business of selling dairy cows, they're, they're I would say more valuable and easier to sell. So there's my list of uh, pros. So now my list of cons. The first one is when you dehorn or disbud, you know, there's always a small chance of infection or, you know, something not going perfectly. So you know, I know the chances are small, but that's one disadvantage. Another disadvantage is, is a lot of people like that classic traditional look of a dairy cow with horns. And actually, I really like that look myself and I do have some horn jerseys and it has really not been an issue to me um, up until this moment. The third con to having a cow with no horns is she is unable to defend herself. Um, she cannot defend herself from coyotes or dogs. She cannot defend herself against larger cattle or beef cattle. And 
and defend her and her calf. And so, you know, that is really important. You know, that is, de you know, depending on where you live, that might be an issue. So now I want to go over you some different methods to disbud or dehorn. Um, and I'm going to put a link below so you can look at all of them. So there's the options are you can use a paste, a disbudding paste. You can use a, a tube or a spoon that takes out the little horn buds of a really small calf. Uh, you can use a Barnes dehorner or you can use a hot iron dehorner. Now I want to share with you our decision on the method of dehorning we chose for our dairy calves. So our calves are three to four months old, which I would prefer that they were between three and six weeks old. But the reason that they're older, I want to share with you why, is uh, we really like corn dairy cows and we were actually, if we're going to let a dairy cow go run with our beef herd, we let the dairy cow have horns so that she can protect herself because they really, really will bully a dairy cow. And uh, we've been, you know, thinking about being gone to our ranch more where the beef cows are. And so we wanted to make sure we had some dairy cows that we could have with us at the ranch. So that was the first reason. And then after we had our new baby grandson, we decided that, uh, and I did the poll, we just decided that it was just not going to be safe. And that if we did sell um, these, you know, this other heifer, that, you know, she would have a much better chance and the people that we know that would want to buy her would definitely appreciate no horns. So the method that we chose was to have a nerve block for pain relief and then um, the barns, use the barns dehorners, which come in a variety of sizes, and then to use the hot iron uh, dehorner just to make sure there's um, all the horn cells are gone and there's no chance of any um, growth again. So there are a few reasons that my calves, that is why they are three or four months old, but I would uh, definitely going forward, if we're going to disbud, we are going to do it between three and six weeks, and we will use uh, pain management and maybe the scoop dehorner and the hot iron dehorner. Okay, this is Kasia. This is Belinda, our milk cow's calf, and I want to show you her horns. See, they're still loose also. Okay, so they haven't grown to the skull yet. They're just little nubs. Okay, this is our third Jersey heifer from our 2022 calf crop. And I wanted to show you, she is naturally cold. See how smooth her head is? Okay, our dairy calves are all ready for the vet to arrive. Uh, they have their halters on, they've had their fly spray. Uh, we're letting them kind of relax a little bit. Okay, we're about to have a ranch call from our vet. He's coming to dehorn three of our Jersey calves. And Mr. Roofer is going to show you some things that we have bought that we keep on our farm so that our vet uses our equipment because remember uh, equipment is a very very common way that cattle diseases are passed you know transmitted to one another and especially the bovine leucosis is transferred through blood so um, we're going to show you a few things that we have bought and we highly encourage you if you have dairy animals to buy your own set of tools. Okay, the first tool that we uh, have bought to keep at our farm is called an electric calf dehorner. Uh, we have an electric cord. You need to have one set up at your barn so your vet can use it. So we highly encourage you to buy that. Okay, what's the second tool that we keep? Okay, 
Okay, this is called a Barnes, B-A-R-N-E-S, dehorner. And we have our own, and you have to sharpen them. Keep them really sharp, and you also have to have the little bucket and that you put something like chlorhexidine in to, you know, to dip it in between animals. That's super important. Okay, what's the next tool we have? A uh, little dehorning scoop is what I call it. Yes. For and that's extra for, small horns. Right. So when they're babies, you just scoop them out real easily. Of course, you want to, you know, use painkillers and... Okay, so we. what's the next thing? That's all. We, well, one thing we also are doing is we uh, use fly spray. Mr. Ripper makes a fly spray, and he sprayed them to make sure they're flea of, free of flies because um, you don't want any flies on the animals because they can lay eggs right into right. any wounds, and, and that can really cause a lot of trouble. And so the vet always has, he's bringing a scalpel, but that's disposable and sterile. And then any kind of suture, those are disposable and out of sterile wrappers. And can you think of anything else? You need halters. Uh, we have head halters gate. on, head gate, and we insist that the vet put on rubber booties. Yes, that's important. Keep boot covers. It's part of your equipment you keep for your dairy cows. Remember, disease-free. You don't want anyone walking with manure or any boots around your barnyard or your animals. And rubber gloves. And rubber gloves. And our vet even puts a jumpsuit on and covers his clothes. And he usually even parks his truck away from our barn. Right. Right. Okay. Well, we're waiting on the vet. And we've got a few questions for him when he gets here. Okay, hi, I want to introduce um, our vet. This is Dr. Andy Rossberg. He is a Texas A&M Veterinary uh, School graduate and a fabulous vet. His father has <laughs> also been our vet for uh, years and years. So I have a couple of questions I'd like to ask you, okay. Dr. Andy. Um, one, could you explain the differences between uh, the homozygous and the heterozygous uh, gene, right? It's the horned, I don't know, gene, right? The horned gene, yeah. Maybe you could kind of elaborate and explain a little bit. Okay. Uh, homozygous, you know, I would I would compare it to pure. So they'll have two of the same, whether it's two dominant or two recessive genes. Uh, so you have a gene for horns or a gene for polled. And it would be either both genes are, are uh, for horn or both genes are polled. And then the heterozygous is a mixture where you have one dominant and one recessive. Okay. So if you have, um, and that's with the bull and the cow. The bull and the cow. It, it yeah. matters. And you can have that testing done? Can a and do they do that? I'm not sure if A&M does. Uh, there's probably some labs. I think uh, UC Davis has a genetics lab that I've used before for some other things. Uh, and they could probably do it. I'm sure there's several around the, the country where they could do DNA testing to see if they're homozygous or heterozygous for horns or, or polled. Okay. Well, thank you for that answer. And the second question, um, so the people with dairy animals, almost all dairy animals have horns. So is there any way or anything we can do to help control getting a 100% polled animal so we do not have to deal with dehorning? That would be the only way that I know of would be to DNA test the bull and the cow and you know only keep those animals that are homozygous for, for being polled with the polled genetics um, and then you know just breed those animals to each other because uh, if you're breeding one that has you know horns in the genetic background even if the other one does not you're probably going to get some horns uh, with the, the pair between those two. Okay, can you recommend uh, an age that you think is uh, the less stressful, I guess, on the animal? Usually the younger the better, uh, the smaller the animal, um, you know, they tend to, to bounce back quicker and it's less painful uh, the younger they are when you dehorn them. Okay, well thank you very much and you know, Dr. Rosberg is going to get started dehorning our three <laughs> dairy calves. <laughs> thank you. You bet.
it is very well worth your time to learn about pole and horn genetics. Dr. Rosberg has done a wonderful job of explaining uh, about how the pole and horn genetics work, and I think you definitely would benefit if you have dairy animals to take this and really expand on your knowledge on this. And thank you, Dr. Rosberg, for taking the time to share all this great information. From our Texas Hill Country Farmstead to you, have a blessed day, and we will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.